Hey everyone, how's it going? Forrest here, again with another installment of my complete analysis of all of JS Box Corral harmonizations. Today we're looking at Was mein will das geschehen sein, which translates to uh, What my god wants, may it always happen. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward corral, not too many interesting harmonic aspects about it. We have some use of secondary dominance, which is a little bit interesting, but for all intents and purposes, the corral operates and functions the way that we would expect. But I'll spend extra time talking about the little tidbits that have a little bit more harmonic interest than others. But we're going to start off the analysis. We have no key signature. We start on A minor. We end on A major. Now, we'd be tempted to say that we start off in the key of A minor, but if we look ahead to the first cadence, it is a perfect authentic cadence in the key of C major. So I'm tempted to call this, or I think this is a C major rather than saying we start off in A minor and then quickly modulate to the key of C major. I just feel like this is a better way of going about doing it. So we start off with a six chord, or depending on how you hear this, you might hear this as a four six chord if the F is more present than the E, but I hear it more like a six chord here. We then have E, G, C, and G, that's C major in first inversion, that's our 1-6 chord. We have F, F, C, and A, that's F major in root position, that's a 4 chord. Then we have C, E, C, and G, that's a root position C major triad, which is our tonic. Passing tones in the lower voices, we have E, G, C, and C, that's a C major triad in first inversion. And we have a couple more uh, passing tones or non-chord tones. One of them is a neighbor tone here, which turns the chord into F, A, D, and C, which on the weak beat is D minor 7 in first inversion, so 2, 6, 5. You know that Bach loves his uh, 2, 6, 5 chords. Um, as we're getting ready for the cadence, we get G, G, E, and C, which is C major in second inversion, usually followed by a 5 chord. G, G, D, and B, which is our dominant 5. We can go ahead and put a bracket underneath those. And then we get C, G, E, and C, our tonic triad and root position. Okay, looking ahead, we have a perfect authentic cadence in the key of A minor. So we're looking for a point in which we modulate, and I'm thinking it'll happen in and around here because we have an ascending melodic minor fragment in the bass. So I don't think we modulate straight away. We get another C major triad on the next beat. We then have G, G, D, and B. That's our G major triad and root position, our dominant. And then we have D, F, D, and A, which is D minor and root position. That's our two chord. This is a transitive progression, or that's what I've been calling them, where we have the chord going in the opposite direction of the cycle of falling fifths. Usually five wants to go down a fifth to two, here it's going up a fifth, or sorry, down a fifth to one. Here it is going up a fifth to two. And I think this is where we modulate, even though we have a G natural here as a passing tone. We have G sharp in the bass not long after. I think this D minor chord is four in the key of A minor as well. We have F sharp, A, D, and D. That's a D major in first inversion. And I think here we have another four chord. In this case, it's uppercase, and it is in first inversion. So I think you can reflect this exclusively with figured bass, but I, I think just changing the Roman numeral is fine as well. And then we have a couple of passing tones in the bass. We have G-sharp, B, D, and D, which is G-sharp diminished in root position. That's a 7 chord. It's always a good sign when 4 goes to 7. And then we get A, C, A, and another C. So we have two roots, two thirds. That's kind of an interesting spelling. This D is a 4-3 suspension over the bass, but we know a tonic's being implied. However, the resolution gets interrupted by this D right here, so there's a little bit of counterpoint going on uh, that makes it interesting because we get a seventh between the tenor and the soprano here, which is interesting. And as we're getting ready for the cadence, we have E, E, G sharp, and B. That's E major in root position with the passing seventh and the bass. That's an E major triad, uh, which is our five chord. Then we have C, E, A, and C. That's A minor in first inversion, which is our tonic 1-6. Another passing tone in the bass before we get E, E, A, and D. I reckon this A is a suspension. 
and this is actually implying another 5 chord because the E goes down to B before going back up to E and that happens with the G sharp to fully contextualize the chord. A little late passing 7th here in the tenor as well before we cadence on A minor, A, C, E, and A, which is our tonic. Looking ahead to the next cadence, we have a perfect authentic cadence in the key of G major. So we're looking for a point on which we modulate. And because we have a bunch of F sharps, we even have a D sharp here, but a bunch of F sharps moving forward and a C sharp actually, um, I'm thinking we're uh, modulating straight away. So this A minor triad, A, C, E, and A, I think is also our super tonic in the key of G major. We have some passing tones that kind of outline a G major, at least the third, the major third of the G major triad in passing before we get F sharp, A, D, and A, which is D major in first inversion. That's our five, six. A couple of passing tones in the alto and the bass before we get D, D, F sharp, and A, which is another D major triad, this time in root position. Passing tone in the tenor, and then we have G, B, F sharp, and B. So interestingly, we have the setup here for what's being implied here is a tonic triad, but I think this is largely just a contrapuntal section. So the F sharp it was going to be a uh, either a tendency tone that goes up to G, so like an like uh, in like an inverse uh, suspension, or F sharp being a suspension that goes down to E, like a seven six over the bass, where this five would go to six in a deceptive fashion which it does. However, it goes through this G chord here. So this might be considered 6-6 six, six without the root because this F sharp is a suspension. This D sharp is enclosing the tone that's being resolved to. We also have an F sharp here as well. If we look at what happens on this beat here, we have F sharp, B, D sharp, and A. That's B7 over F sharp, which is 5, 4, 3 of 6 because E minor is our 6. And then here on this beat, we have E, B, E, and G, which is our sixth chord, and a passing seventh of the bass. So a little interesting suspension play right here, where the suspension gets interrupted, and another chord is contextualized to bring it to the chord that was going to be a result of the resolution anyways. All right, moving to the next system, we have C sharp, A, E, and G. That's A7 over C sharp which is a dominant of our dominant in first inversion, 5-6-5-5. Five, five of five. And then we have D, A, D, and F sharp. It goes where we expect, which is our five chord, our dominant, D major. And then, of course, that goes to G major, our tonic, G, B, D, and G. Root position tonic triad. Okay, looking ahead, we cadence on E major, which even with the fifth, especially with the fifth of the chord in the melody, that is a half cadence in the key of A minor, and we're looking for a point on which we modulate pretty quickly because we have F sharp, G sharp, and A, really just this extended, even from the cadence, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, kind of similar to this melodic fragment that we have here, just uh, augmented, like uh, expanded over the course of the harmonic rhythm rather than being on eighth notes. These are quarter notes, but still, this is sort of our key that's leading us to thinking that we're in the key of A minor. So I think we modulate pretty much straight away. So you could say that you modulate using the G major. It sounds like this G major going to C um, hasn't quite gone to the idea of A minor yet. So I'm going to call this C major chord for C, C, E, and G with the passing seventh and the tenor. Um, and then... I'll say that we've modulated to the key of A minor, this C now being our mediant. And then leaps up an octave to C, A, F sharp, and A, which is F sharp diminished over C. It's kind of interesting. We've seen this chord, I think, once before, maybe one, maybe another time, but this is a diminished 6-4. It's a harmonization of the melodic minor scale. We have a melodic minor fragment happening in the alto, so... It's interesting that this is happening, but look in the bass, it has uh, motion in the opposite direction. C, B, A, F sharp, G sharp, A, they're both approaching A in opposite directions, and this is the resulting harmony that Bach chose. We have B, D, G sharp, and B, that's G sharp diminished over B, so first inversion, that's 7, 6. So 3 wants to go to 6, and then 6 can go to 7, which can go to 1, which it goes to next, A, E, A, and C. 
passing tone in the tenor as well, so 6-7-1. Um, it's a normative progression, I would say. Not super common, but common enough where we see it with some frequency. Uh, 6 is like a predominant chord, and that goes to 7, which is functioning as our dominant, and then resolves to our tonic. It's not as strong as something that we would find in a cadential situation in most times, but here it is happening in the middle of the progression. We then have G, D, uh, G, E, and B. Super interesting here, we have uh, E minor over G, which is a 5-6 chord, so we're seeing a little bit of the modal influence in Bach's music here. This is a modal me melody. Um, I forgot who composed it, uh, sorry. But uh, yeah, we're seeing a minor 5 here, but this is definitely a melody that was composed during the, uh, the Renaissance uh, for sure. So we're seeing a little bit of the modal harmony make an appearance here. And here we have F natural, C, E, and A. Uh, I think what's actually happening here is this E is a suspension, and this this is really just another contrapuntal section here. I think F, C, and A. This D is our resolution here, and really what's being implied is some type of two or four chord. Maybe this is a root position four chord. Maybe this is a two six five. I hear it more like a two six five, like a. Uh, Oh no, apologies, I'm so sorry. I thought we were in the key of C major for a second. No, there's no way that this could be a 2-6-5 chord. Um, no, actually, no, it could be a 2-6-5 chord. If we look at this C as a suspension, like, no, that wouldn't make that wouldn't make sense, would it? I think this is a D minor chord, but the B sort of interrupts it, and then the A gets interrupted by E. There's just a series of uh, contrapuntal gestures that keep the chord from fully resolve, uh, resolving. But I think that ultimately what's being conveyed here is like a D minor triad in first inversion. So like a 4-6 chord that ultimately resolves to E major. Or doesn't resolve necessarily, but arrives at E major. So this makes this a particular kind of cadence that you might have heard of in the textbook called a Phrygian half cadence, where we have half-step motion in the bass where we cadence on 5. Um, in most cases, it's a 4-6 chord, but I don't see why it couldn't be a 6 chord as well. Uh, maybe for voice leading reasons, if you're just uh, working with downbeats. But Bach can avoid voice leading errors with the counterpoint and spacing things out. Okay, moving ahead, we have a perfect authentic cadence at the end of our next phrase in the key of C major. So we're looking for a point in which we modulate, and I think we modulate straight away. We have these passing tones in the upper voices and they are happening after an A minor triad, A, A, C, and E. And if we say we're in the key of C major at this point, this is now our six, just like the start of our first phrase. This is just a harmonic variation on our first phrase. Uh, if you look, it's very similar. We have G, B, E, and G. That's E minor in first inversion. And I think this is one of the more interesting progressions in the chorale. That's three, six. So 6 going to 3, 6, another transitive progression going in the opposite direction we expect. Then we have F, A, E, and A, this E being a 7, 6 suspension over the bass. It's actually D, F, A, and A, which is D minor in first inversion. So we have 6 going to 3, 6 going to 2, 6. So this is some parallel, or maybe not parallel harmony exactly, but adjacent harmony, where the chords are going in the direction of the scale and just harmonizing the notes uh, adjacent to one another as they occur in the scale. Then we have C, E, D, and uh, G, but this D is an accented non-chord tone. It's really C, and it's another 7-6 suspension over the bass, and we get a C major triad in first inversion here. So 3-6, 2-6, 1-6, a bunch of sort of passing harmonies. And then we get D, E, G, and C. Again, this D being an accented non-chord tone, and it's the C, the E, the G, and the C that are our chord tones. So we don't need to reanalyze. This is just another C major chord, but we'll change the figure base to reflect the fact that it's in root position. So we are moving ahead to the cadence now. We have D, A, F, and C, which is D minor 7 in root position, which is kind of interesting. We usually expect it in first inversion, but it's a 2-7 chord. Uh, D, A, F, and C. Then we have G, G, F, and B. That's G7 in root position, 5, 7 chord. We've seen this progression before, but it's not super usual, especially in a perfect authentic cadence. 2, 7, 5, 7, and then the F turns into a D here, so we get rid of the 7th, but it's really part of just like a larger chord 
and that's happening over this whole beat. So these are both chord tones, no need to reanalyze or change anything before we cadence on C major, C, G, E, and C. Two, five, one. Bach would have been a jazz guy. All right, looking ahead, we have a perfect authentic cadence in the key of A minor, and we're looking for a point on which we modulate. And happens, we get, we get G sharps at the beginning of the next measure, so I think we modulate pretty close. Maybe not with the C major, but maybe on the beat afterwards. We have A, A, E, and C. That's A minor, which is our submediant six. And then we can call that one in the key of A minor. And then we get D, A, F, and B, which is B minor seven flat five over D. That's two, six, five. We know that Bach loves his two, six, five chords. We're seeing it in the middle of a progression here, which is interesting. We get E, G sharp, E, and B as a passing chord, which is E major in root position, two going to five, before we get uh, F, A, E, and A, another one of these chords like we saw earlier. This E is an accented non-chord tone, and it's really the D minor and first inversion that we're seeing here. So a bit of a deceptive progression, E going to F rather than going to A, but we're seeing a D minor chord on top of it rather than an F major chord on top of it, which would be more of a textbook deceptive progression. But we know that 4-6 is just as common as 6 is in terms of deceptive progressions, at least in box music. Afterwards, we get a B, G sharp, D, and D, which is G sharp diminished over B, which is our seven chord in first inversion. And then we see the B leap up to A here, uh, which is not a chord tone. And then the A here is also not a chord tone. They kind of hint at the resolution happening because the G sharp is going up to A, but we never get the rest of the chord for context. Uh, and then interestingly, after this five chord, we get G sharp B, E, and D, which is a 5-7 chord, E7 over G sharp, that's 5-6. So seeing two dominants, this isn't unprecedented either, but it's relatively uncommon. You don't see it all that often in box music, it's usually a dominant followed by a tonic or continuing to spiral the direction towards a tonic by prolonging it with like a deceptive progression or uh, more passing chords, but two dominants next to one another. I kind of hear this whole phrase is just wanting to go to one, which it eventually does on the following and, right? Because we have the C here, the A here, the A here, and the E, which is the common chord between five and one, or sorry, the common tone between five and one. We get a root position tonic triad, which is where a five, six chord wants to go, or even a five, six, five chord, because the G sharp is in the bass, it wants to resolve upwards. All right, looking towards the cadence, we have uh, D, G sharp, E, and B. That's E7 over D, kind of an interesting chord. We don't see five, four, three chords all that often. Oh, sorry, I made the same mistake that I did in my notes. This is a five, four, two chord, D, G sharp, E, and B. The D is the seventh of the chord, makes a lot more sense. And we would expect five, four, two to go to one, but it doesn't, and that's what makes this super interesting. D sharp, F sharp, A, and C. That's D sharp fully diminished. It's being used as part of a chromatic ascending uh, bass line over the course of this measure, and this D-sharp diminished 7th chord is actually 7-7 seven, seven of 5. And then we get 5 in root position afterwards, E, B, A, and D. This A being a suspension, this C being a passing tone. We know that 5's being implied, and then it turns into 7 at the resolution. The G-sharp gets introduced over this D, that tritone that's happening right before the resolution. It's very interesting. And the voices don't typically resolve the way that you expect them to. The D goes down to C sharp, which is what you would expect, but the G sharp goes down to E. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, but we would expect the tritone to resolve outward um, to a sixth rather than downwards to a third. But thirds and sixths are the same thing. So just one's a, a inverted version of the other. But then we get uh, our tonic triad major this time because it is Picardy third minor chorale. Um, you expect the beat, the final cadence with a minor chord to have the Picardy third. Most of them do. You could pretty much count on it having that. So five four two seven of five 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 seven one. Very interesting progression to cap off the chorale. Uh, I said it wasn't super interesting, but there are actually a ton of interesting harmonic tidbits about this chorale. Everything more or less functions the way that we would expect. This 5-4-2 chord really threw us for a loop because we expect 5-4-2 to resolve to 1-6. 
but the the seventh of the chord does not resolve down by step which is interesting because you typically expect the seven of the chord to resolve down by step and it doesn't so here it is in the wild not functioning the way that we would expect it to uh yeah that's pretty much all i have to say about the chorale thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it I hope you're enjoying the videos if you're following me along on this journey i really enjoy putting these together sitting down and analyzing every day makes me really happy and looking at box music makes me very happy so i'm happy to uh to uh, produce these videos and get closer with the music. There are so many more videos scheduled for the future. I have hundreds of them lined up. So if you're interested in going on this journey with me, feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified about when I upload. I'll upload um, every day and uh, I look at a chorale in the order in which they're presented in the BWV ordering of things. So I've already analyzed a couple of chorales out of order, but I'm in the process of filling in the gaps in order, starting all the way from BWV1, going all the way through the early 400s, at least all the chorales that uh, are found in Bach's vocal music from like the early, you know, the first third of like the 1200 BWV numbers or however many there are. So. Thank you again so much for watching the video. I look forward to tomorrow's analysis, and I hope you take care.